So this is the real lift landing page, and this is the replica lift landing page that I made with Webflow. Not too bad, right? There's some small differences you can see, but overall, you know, I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back because I think I did a pretty good job. I've been working on this for the past few weeks because I think one of the best ways to gain mastery over Webflow is to not only work on my own projects, but to also recreate landing pages from top tech companies. This allows me to see how they write their copy, how they structure the sections of their page, and how they deal with design decisions when it comes to responsiveness. And so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the five key takeaways that I made uh, when recreating the Lyft webpage on Webflow. And the cool thing is that you can apply these takeaways to your designs in the future. So let's hop to my computer and we'll check it out. All right, so the first takeaway is more of just a technique, but it's how to create this scrolling text effect. I'm not gonna get too deep in the weeds on how to do this, but the Overview is basically you wanna create a div that contains a heading and you want the height of the div to be the same height as the line height of the heading. And you can see that right now it's set to overflow hidden so you can't see any of the other text entries but if you change it to visible, you can see all of them. And the key with this is you wanna make sure you have the first text entry and the last text entry being the same, and that allows you to loop it. And then really from there to animate it, you just go to interactions, you make a page load animation, uh, and then you just have the H2 as the target, and you just move it by the line height, which is 2.75. And so after every one second, it moves through, and it goes through each of the different text entries. And then at the very end, it goes to the first text entry, and then it uh, very quickly shoots back to the bottom without any delay and duration. So it goes right back to the first text entry, and because it looped, it goes uh, infinitely. And so that's essentially, in a nutshell, how you do that. And so that was a cool thing to learn. All right, the second takeaway is that the Webflow native slider just doesn't have the capability required to do a lot of feature-rich functionality that the Lyft slider has. Like, to be able to do this, you cannot use the Webflow native slider. It's impossible because you can't have, like, an active class for the active slide and then a separate class for an inactive slide. Like you can see here, it's a different style when you have each of these slides highlighted. So you can't do that with Webflow, amongst other things that you can't do. And so in order to do this, you have to, one, create a CMS for this. So I have a CMS that has all of these driver testimonials on there. And so this is where you have to house all of the information. And then from there, you can use Swiper.js, which if you've never used this, it is a pain in the ass if you've never done it before, because I don't really know anything about JavaScript. And in order to use Swiper.js, it's nothing but JavaScript. And so I will say at least Swiper.js has a lot of good tutorials on, on how to use it, but it's not easy because all of the styling that you use, usually you would style slides in Webflow and you do to an extent, but like for here, you actually adjust the slides per view here. You adjust the spacing here. And for like the uh, breakpoints, you have to set that in this in JavaScript instead of setting it in Webflow. So the workflow is just way different than how you would normally set up a slide for using the Webflow native slider. But if you can get it, <laughs> and it took me hours and hours to figure it out. But if you can do it and figure it out, one, it's super rewarding. And two, you can make some really neat uh, sliders like this. And it's even responsive as well. And so it just kind of works just like that. And so I think it's very useful to learn Swiper.js. But just know that if you're not used to JavaScript, it is, uh, it's going to be a very steep learning curve. So the third takeaway I learned with this Lyft project is that it's important to have familiarity between the sections. Because if you look here, this section is the same as this section, which is really just this section, but flipped on the x-axis. Uh, this section is the same minus the uh, 
feature list here. And then this section is the same, but flipped on the X axis. So a lot of the sections are repeating. And I think that this is important for a couple of reasons. One, it just allows for more efficient designing um, because instead of having to do this from scratch, I can just copy and paste this uh, grid here and then I can paste it here and then duplicate the class and, and flip the columns so that the picture is now on the left and I can call that grid image left. And so it just allows you to be more efficient. And I think also from a UX standpoint, it sort of allows the user to have a kind of like a learned expectation on how sections are going to appear. Because if every section is like innovative and different, then I feel like it becomes harder to scan the page. Whereas here, it's very easy once I get a sense of, okay, I now know how the section is laid out. This is also gonna be very easy to scan through. This is easy to scan through. And so I think that this is a lot easier for the user to be able to just uh, skim and read through because they're going to sort of learn what the repeating pattern of the sections are as opposed to if every section was a completely different design and a completely different style. So I think that's one of the big takeaways that uh, I've learned with this website is that it, you don't have to always create this innovative section for each and every section of your website. You can have a lot of repeating structure and I think it just helps with readability. The fourth takeaway I learned is a UX principle, which is to figure out who's actually using your website. If you think about their Lyft services, two main audience, you have riders and you have drivers. Well, who's going to be the main person that is going to likely be on the Lyft website? It's probably going to be drivers because the process to become a driver is more complicated and probably more involved than it is to just be a rider where you just download the app and you get your ride. So they sort of designed it like that, where the main uh, call to action here is apply to drive. And the first section that they have here is about driving with Lyft, because I think they realize that for the large majority of people that go onto the Lyft website, it's probably going to be people who are interested with earning money with driving with Lyft, as opposed to riders, because a lot of riders are probably just going to pull out their phone and download the app because they kind of know what it is and they probably need to get a ride and they're not going to be going to the website. They're going to be just going to the app store and downloading the app. So I think keeping in mind who, especially if you have multiple audiences, who is likely going to be on your website and then cater to them primarily. Um, and I think that that was a really helpful takeaway for, for this project. All right, the last takeaway has to do with design decisions to make things responsive. And this really was most exemplified in the footer. So you can see we have like three columns of links. And so I've seen with other websites where if you go to say mobile, these will likely become one column where it's just a giant one column list with all of these links. And so what Lyft did is to, in order to clean that up so the footer wasn't massive, they decided to, when you get to mobile, turn all of the uh, links into an accordion. So basically each section is now an accordion where you can find all of the links. And so I thought that that was a really uh, easy way to just clean up the footer so there's not just you know <laughs> a million links in one column, but you can just sort of get to the section that you need and then figure out what link you need to get to from there. So just, I basically just learned um, different ways to approach design decisions when it comes to making things responsive. But this was definitely like the main th thing that I hadn't really seen um, that or had, hadn't used in any of my past projects before. So while I only talked about the five main takeaways, there are a ton of other obstacles and challenges that I faced when working on this project. And that's the cool thing when it comes to doing a project like this, is I can watch all the tutorials I want, but until I actually go to use Webflow and try to make something with it, I'm going to encounter obstacles that I have to creatively problem solve and the the ability to critically think and problem solve is just nothing that, it's not a skill that I can gain 
by watching tutorials. And that's really why I like this project-based learning. Um, and I found that with doing this Lyft webpage, this was way harder than the other landing page that I made, uh, which was DoorDash. But if you're interested in checking that out, the DoorDash landing page, and seeing the takeaways I had with that website, you can check that out here. If you found this video to be cool, it'd mean a lot if you hit the subscribe button. It helps me out and just lets me know if these videos are resonating with you. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.